you know, your brain is animating you and asking me questions, Brett, and my brain is animating me and responding to those questions. So the way we we are bringing our digital people to life, they have a, a working model of a digital brain, um, which enables them to, to see, hear, respond, react in real time in a highly personalized way. Hey everyone, I'm Brett Kinsella and this is 10 Minutes On. This is where we bring out the latest innovations in the voice, AI, and synthetic media industry these days. And I'm really excited to talk today about virtual humans. It's one of the most interesting and I think important technologies that's arising around the space. And there's a perfect overlap with what many people have been doing in the conversational AI industry. And I thought what we would probably start out with is just to do something to give you a sense of what this could look like. Hey there, I'm Ruth, the Nestle Toll House Cookie Coach. Let's kick things off with a classic Nestle Toll House chocolate chip cookie recipe. I can take you through it step by step. Or would you rather work on a new one? I'd like to customize my cookie. I really think you're going to like putting your own spin on the classic recipe. To begin, let me know if you've got a dietary preference. I'd like to do gluten free, please. No gluten. Got it. How do you like your cookie? Thin and crispy. Time to add morsels. Please pick one. Semi-sweet. Classic choice. You chose a winner. Okay, so that gives you an example of how a brand might use a virtual human for engagement. And I can sure this man, Greg Cross, can give us a lot more examples. Greg is the CEO of Soul Machines. Thanks for joining me, Greg. Hey, Brett, great to see you today. So what did we just see there? Yeah, this, this is uh, what you saw there was what we're doing a lot of these days. I mean, what we're seeing in the world today is the world is a lot more, di uh, a lot more digital. It's a lot more transactional. So what we're really focused on doing a lot of the time, you know, as we did for Nestle there, you know, look for new ways to enable brands to connect, you know, directly in a very personal and scalable way with their consumers. Okay, so we talked about this idea of engagement and there's a lot of different use cases though for this. So they're connecting directly. We saw a cookie coach there. Maybe give us some other examples of how people are using the technology in order to engage. Yeah, well, we have clients across such a wide range of industries and a wide range of use cases. So, you know, as you saw with, you know, Ruth there, you know, a brand influencer, a cookie coach, you know, uh, a person you can engage with and actually do something with. Um, you know, so that's you know, one example, as you've just said. But, you know, you can go to the banking and finance industry where the world is, you know, incredibly transactional. You know, more and more of us just bank using our app. You know, so the question, you know, for banks is how do they connect with their consumers? So, you know, providing a digital banker, providing a digital financial coach or a digital financial companion who can help you manage your budget. Um, uh, you know, is one way you can get into areas like healthcare and education, uh, where student companions. You know, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of students now attend college um, via a digital campus, through, via online teaching and online courses. So, how do you actually make them feel connected to the, uni the university as part of a campus in a digital world? So, these are, I mean, these are just a few examples of some of the you know different roles that digital people are taking. We're seeing. Also, a lot of applications and in internal HR applications in a work from anywhere world. You know, where you're, you're recruiting people, you're onboarding people, you're training and upskilling people, and they're working from home rather than from an office. Um, you know, a digital coach, you know, helping people under, you know, learn new skills and new capabilities as part of their job and part of their role, um, also becomes an, uh, you know, another incredible way these types of use cases can work. Okay, so you said a lot there. So we've got the brand experience extension, which was a good example of the Ruth Cookie Coach. Uh, so one way for the the maker of the cookies to actually have a relationship with the baker while they're in the kitchen, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something that hasn't happened in the past. You know, they had the they had the 
the labeling on the, the packaging, but that was it. And they didn't get the feedback. Mm. And they also, they didn't know what was happening. Yeah, but it's actually more fundamental than that, um, Brett, because if you think of Nestle as a, you know, I mean, it's a, you know, one of the biggest food ingredients companies in the world. Um, you know, Toll House is one of their baking ingredients brands. Um, you know, as a consumer goods company, I actually don't, you know, have a lot of opportunity to build direct, personal, face-to-face -face relationships with their consumers. I mean, because all of their sales, all of their distribution, you know, is, is traditionally through supermarkets, through third-party organizations. So, you know, think about what this means for a, a consumer goods brand like Nestle and, and the various categories that they have um, products in, you know, their ability to interact with and uh, collect data uh, and personalize experiences directly with consumers. It, it really is something, you know, that, that these top, many of these brands and organizations just simply haven't been able to do before. Yeah, and you mentioned, you mentioned healthcare and, and banking. And, you know, another thing that I think is interesting in this space is e-commerce. We're talking about all these different types of digital channels that we have today that people are used to interacting with images and text, maybe mm -hmm. buttons, maybe a search bar, but they don't have any way to really walk them through this other than maybe chatbots, which are on a lot of websites, are available in some mobile apps, but historically haven't been that engaging of an interface and maybe haven't had as much success. This strikes me as a a more compelling way to get people to draw them in, to get them engaged with your brand. Yeah, I mean, obviously, obviously you know, I, I, I agree with you, uh, you know, a lot when you talk about that. And, and look, I mean, I want to be really clear. I mean, you know, on a website, on an e-commerce store, you know, chatbots, search boxes, I mean, all of these applications improve the user experience. But there is a fundamental thing that is missing from that experience and you know the analogy i drew or the, you know is looking at the real world you know when you walk into a retail store to buy something you know there's an incredible human experience which starts with hi great to see you today right. okay i mean you know it starts with you know hello um and at that point in time you know you're in a process of establishing an emotional connection um and how you establish that emotional connection and where, 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 where I as a consumer you know, or somebody who's gone into that real environment, where we go from there depends a lot on the level of emotional connection um, that I feel, uh, you know, the way in which um, somebody entertains me as part of that emotional connection. And, and so these are the incredible human qualities, you know, that we really, really enjoy when we, you know, are, you know, are shopping, you know, or we enjoy sometimes, you know, I mean, you know, right. because, you know, other times it's just like, you know, I, I need a new pair of socks because I got a hole in mine and, of course. And, and it's just a simple transaction, buy them, get them, you know, out the door. So, I mean, it's this opportunity for brands and consumers to really, really connect in a way that's you know just not possible with it, what, what, you know, in any other form factor. So, I mean, that's really the big differentiator here. You you mentioned this idea of greeting, and I understand that from our previous conversations that greeting is actually a skill that you've created, and you have all these different types of skills that the Soul Machines avatars come with. Could you talk about that, the skills and the knowledge and, and how that works? Sure. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a that's a that's a great place to start. So, you know, when you create a, and design your a digital person, let's say to be a digital salesperson for you, um, there are some basic skills that every digital salesperson is going to need. You know, no matter which brand they're representing, and you know, that's the ability, as you just said, to greet, to say hello, um, to engage with you, you know, in a way that is consistent with the brand. So. You know, we've created this concept of skills, you know, which makes it very, very simple to, you know, for our clients, you know, to um, to deploy digital people with skills and tailor those skills to meet their own specific needs. So, you know, when you create a digital per person, you've got the way they look, 
you've got their voice in the way they sound, you've got you, you're designing their personality in the way they you know in the way they represent your brand, happy and friendly, you know, you know, cool and professional as examples of different types of personalities. And then you've got the the, the skills that they need to do their job. So um, you know, greeting somebody is a pretty basic skill that we all need to, we all master pretty early in life. Um, um, you know, another example of a skill is something we call elegant failure. Um, you know, at some point we all get to, you know, you know, we all get to a point where, you know, I'm sorry, Brett, I just don't know the answer to that question. I'm going to have to get back to you on that. That's an example of elegant failure. Or, you know, I couldn't quite hear what you said. Could you repeat it? Um, you know, these, you know, so elegant failure is another example of skill. So, you know, um, you know, so we build a, a, a bunch of standard skills which are configurable and, and can be easily plugged in. We've even created, made it very, very easy for third parties, for our, for our channel partners, for our the digital agencies and the systems integrators and the digital consultancies we work with. It's very, very easy for them to create, you know, very, very specific third party skills, maybe for a specific vertical market or, or maybe as an integration into a specific um, legacy or enterprise database. So, you know, that's the concept of skills. The, the next part then becomes the knowledge base, you know, um, and, you know, what is the conversational content um, that the digital worker, you know, the digital salesperson is going to need in order to do their job. And, and you know, that is all about conversational AI and that is all about curating um, content. Um, Another aspect of what we do with our digital people is they actually have the ability to interact with content in their digital world, whether that be pictures, whether it be videos, uh, so that they can present that content in an effective way. They can see, you know, if, if, if we're um, working with um, another one of our clients, General Motors, and we put a red car, a silver car, and a blue car on the screen, um, the, the, the GM digital brand ambassador knows that you're looking at the red car brand um, and can guide and direct the conversation in those ways. So, I mean, these are some of the, the ways we think about creating this really, really rich, interactive, immersive digital environment, even in a 2D world, um, before we even start to, you know, start thinking about or talking about the metaverse. Interesting. And so... One of the things you're talking about there is this idea, not only that it has some knowledge about what's going on, but I think you use the term autonomous versus directed. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of virtual human examples out there that people will see, which are either directed or we would call it scripted. And that it's basically a pre-recorded video. It's produced and they can do a broadcast of it. Anyone can access it anytime, but they can't interact with it. And I know one of the things that you're really focused on is this idea of being able to interact and have that autonomous capability. Could you talk a little bit about the difference there so that people are oriented around the fact that virtual humans aren't just one thing? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and this is, I mean, I think is a really, really important part as, as this part of the industry, you know, grows up. There's, there's two parts to creating an avatar or, or a virtual human. Um, you know, one is the creation of the CGI asset. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, work going into really democratizing the creation of, you know, the ability for, for, for people, you know, regular people like you and me, Brett, or, you know, to create their own avatars. So, so you know, and really, really high quality avatars. And, and this has been, you know, an area where, you know, expert CGI artists in the movie industry and the games industry, you know, have, you know, been at the forefront of creating high quality CGI assets. So there's a lot of work going into the democratization of that. We have our own tools with um, Digital DNA Blender, which is part of our creative suite, uh, where, we, where, where our end users can literally create new digital people by blending together what we think of as digital DNA, which we've captured from different people of different ethnicities, ages, genders. And, and so you can create a, a, a something that can represent your brand in the way that you, you want it to be represented. So that's, you know, I mean, that's, I mean, that's part of it. Then the second part of um, this world of virtual humans is how you bring them to life, how you animate them. And there's only a certain number of ways, you know, that we you can animate a digital character. So, you know, in the movie industry, in the games industry, I mean, these are uh, uh, industries that have developed using uh, using human actors to create content. 
So human actors perform a, a role or a scene that's captured using motion capture or volumetric video, and then that data is mapped to the CGI character, um, the avatar, the virtual human, and that is played back as a linear story. Um, right. So, I mean, we're all used to seeing that type of animation. It's really, really high quality animation. It's pretty expensive to create. I mean, there's a reason why CGI movies you know, are big budget movies. There's a reason why AAA games are big budget games. The next, you know, this, the second way animation can be done is, you know, scripted animation. So scripted animation is different to scripted content because, you know, content is, you know, what is scripted in a conversational corpus or an NLP engine, for example. Scripted animation is where you're actually having to tell the virtual human what to do and when to do it. Um, so, you know, it's, once again, really, really time intensive and very hard to maintain. Autonomous animation, which is a field we, you know, we lead the world in and we've been pioneers in, is exactly what you and I are doing here. Um, you know, your brain is animating you and asking me questions, Brett, and my brain is animating me and responding to those questions. So the way we we are bringing our digital people to life, they have a, a working model of a digital brain, um, which enables them to, to see, hear, respond, react in real time in a highly personalized way. So it's, it's, a, it's a completely new field. It's an area which we've been researching and working on for over 10 years. Uh, my co-founder started that work in a, in a university research lab back in 2012. Um, and it's work that you know, we funded through a lot, of, you know, um, a lot of deep tech research over the six years that we've been Soul Machines. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's really, really important for people to understand that the first example we showed or the example we showed at the beginning was this interactive capability as opposed to just somebody talking to you. And another use case that you've come up with and have been uh, talking about a lot more lately is this idea of digital twins, particularly for celebrities. So I have a clip here of Carmelo Anthony, who is an NBA basketball player. Hi, I'm Digital Mellow. I've been created in partnership with the team at Soul Machines to digitally amplify the work that the real Carmelo Anthony is so passionate about. I've read his memoir, Where Tomorrows Aren't Promised, and I've learned a lot about the real Carmelo. I learned about his upbringing in West Baltimore, his older brothers, the dudes on the block, and the community that looked after him and helped him see the bigger picture, making him the man he is today. Okay, so so that's really interesting as well. I saw where you debuted this with the Carmelo Anthony on stage. You showed him talking and interacting with his digital twin. What does this technology enable people to do? Because I think it's really important to understand that there's a lot of interesting tech here. We've got the we've got the synthetic voice. We have obviously the virtual human image avatar. Uh, we also have the ability to have a conversation like we're having, as you say, this autonomous idea. Um, but how are celebrities going to be using this? Yeah, um, yeah, great question, Brett. So, I mean, and this is really an extension of the work that we're doing with brands and consumer brands, corporate brands. Because if you think about celebrities today, celebrities are brands in their own right. Um, and, you know, what we've seen during the social media era is the era is the first time that celebrities have had the opportunity to find a platform to enable them to connect and communicate directly with their fans. Um, you know, so, the, you know, so we, we saw this as a really, really exciting opportunity to create, you know, what we think of as the fan experience of the future. Um, you know, creating a, a highly scalable and a highly personalized way where NBA fans can connect directly with their heroes like Camelo Anthony. So, um, you know, the really, really cool thing about digital Camelo is he's always available. You know, celebrities in real life are very, very time poor. There are so many demands on their time. You know, they have to, you know, if you're an athlete, you have to train, you have playing commitments, you have sponsor commitments. You know, so you're always, you know, thinking very, very carefully about how you utilize your time. So having a digital twin becomes a way in which you can 
you know, multiply that impact, um, you know, multiply yourself effectively. Um, and we see this being really, really important as we move from the 2D digital worlds of today to the 3D metaverse worlds of the future. So, um, you know, so this is a way where fans can connect directly with Mellow. I mean, one of the biggest NBA markets in the world today is China. So imagine a, a world where Digital Mellow can speak Mandarin you know, to his Chinese fans. You know, Digital Mellow in real life doesn't speak Mandarin, but right. you know, with the AI technology, the AI voice technology that exists today, you know, once we've captured Mellow's voice speaking in his native language, you know, we can convert that to any one of a dozen languages um, to, to enable fan engagement. And that creates a, a new type of fan community. And when you create a new type of fan community, it creates new opportunities for monetization as well. So, I mean, that's kind of the ways we're starting to think about, you know, this whole world of um, hyper-realistic digital twins and digital celebrities. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I know people have learned a lot today. This has been great, Greg. Hey, Viola. Hi, how Brent. Are you? Hey, Greg. All right, what do you think, Greg? Should we have you let's side us out? Sure. Yep. If you'd like to learn more about Soul Machines and see other virtual human examples and use cases, just go to soulmachines.com. I look forward to seeing you there. Hey, VoiceBot Nation, thanks for being back here once again. Please like and subscribe to this channel. We really appreciate it. It'll help us out with YouTube's algorithm, and it'll help you too.